Welcome back to the Watchtower Film Podcast by Cinema Lovers for Cinema Lovers. I'm here today joined by my lovely co-host, Mr. Michael Dello, giving us a cinematography perspective. Hey, I love light and I love cameras. <laughs> Mr. Austin Young, making sure we're sounding good on the mics. <laughs> <laughs> and Look at with my hands. Last, Mr. John Eric Castro giving us an actor's perspective. <laughs> <laughs> and I am your humble film servant, Carlos. Go on. He's not that zesty. You know, <laughs> zesty? <laughs> this film reminds me of a 1940s uh, cinematic masterpiece by Johann von Schwarzenbergen. <laughs> and if you don't know it, then you obviously haven't been watching TCM, right? Um, you know, this just has a wonderful panache. A von Schwe, And uh, uh, honestly... A Zeshwan sauce, it, if you will. It, it, I, see, I think what... what let me talk, Michael. Um, I think what this reminds me of is like a good feta... All right, dude, I got to ask, two-parter. Feta cheese? Okay, two-parter coming from Mr. John Eric Ostro. Yeah, um... <laughs> Can you shut the fuck up? <laughs> hey, yo! Shut the fuck, fuck up! up. Hey, guys, right. welcome back. I'm keeping that in. I don't care. That's a little uh, funny. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. Did I ruin the intro? Carlos, welcome Michael. back. That was a great intro. Yeah. Intros have been had. Welcome back. Welcome if back. If you're joining us for the first time, you don't know any of us. We were <laughs> improperly introduced. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> if this is your first time, you don't know who the fuck you we are. You just randomly clicked. Yeah. Thank you for randomly clicking. Speaking of which, you since you're already right here, please subscribe to the podcast. Hit yeah. the little bell now. Hit the little bell. <laughs> You'll know when we're... Dingle. Bear Ling -a -ling. Ling -a -ling. <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> is that um, coffee written? Um, uh, yeah, Dr. Dre probably has a thing on the ring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ding dong. For all the people ding, ding, who ding, didn't ding, know ding. who we are. We just got mm -hmm. copyright mm -hmm. instructions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Welcome back. Even if I see it? I don't know. Properly introducing my fellow co-host, Mr. John Eric Oster, giving us an acting perspective. And my opinion on this masterpiece. Masterpiece. He calls it a masterpiece. After a second try, yeah. Oh, that's a curious statement. We'll re revisit that. Mr. Michael Allah offering a cinematography perspective. Hi, Mom. Thanks for finally tuning in. You know, she's probably still going to see that. What? She's probably only going to see the highlights. We lost Anne long, long, long. You ago. know what? It, it's yeah, so no. funny because uh, every time like I come to do this, I'm always like, "Oh, I'm going to do an episode on this movie." And she's like, "Oh man, I really want to watch that movie." And then I'm like, "And then you're going to check out the podcast, right?" And she's like, "I really want to watch the movie." <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Mr. Austin Young offering an editing producing perspective. You know what to do with your hands? <laughs> yeah. Bada bing, bada Howdy. boom. Hey, Mr. World fun Wide fact the about that that film. Oh, Sandra um, likes Talladega Nights over Star Dodgeball. What? Yeah. Ooh. Uh, they I were both on cable the other night, and I was like, we're eating dinner, and I was like, let's watch Dodgeball. You know? She's like, mm. And then she's like, oh, Talladega Nights. I was like, you like Talladega Nights? She's like, yeah, it's funnier than Dodgeball. It is, man. You know what my favorite line from Talladega <sighs> Nights is? It is. It is probably like the stupidest line in the movie, or like the stupidest, but the most unforgetful line. Forgetful line. It's like the montage at the beginning. And his wife is like, hey, driver, drive these. And he cuts from him. He's like, dear God, please be 18. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know why, but I love that That's line. Terrible. Another fun oh. fact about that movie, too, is you know when he's running around outside naked, the uh -huh. he's on fire? That actually did happen in NASCAR. Really? Yeah, yeah. It's called like an invisible flame where... Uh, some... Oh, yeah. No, it's an, it's an alcohol flame, right? That, yeah, uh, yeah. It, uh, it's burning you, but you can't see the flame on yeah. them. Yeah. Uh, so it was a real thing, I guess. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Real things are very Anyways. nice to made fun of, to be made fun of. I'm your humble co-host, Mr. Film servant. Oh, I'm sorry that I banged the mic. As in the first person. Mr. You bang what? A.K. the mic. Yeah, yeah you did. No, but you're our humble film servant. I am your humble film servant, Carlos M. De La Torre. Why are you saying it all quiet and See, sad? I don't Google film shit. <laughs> I text this guy. Oh, I substantially Google shit, uh, which is why <laughs> I'm here Google today. <laughs> um... Mr. Austin. You're tuning into the Watchtower Film Podcast, not to be confused with any Jehovah Witness um, <laughs> things at all in the slightest. I, I, exactly. In fact, if you're a Jehovah Witness, turn this off now. This is going to get wicked. No, I Go. I was <laughs> no, don't. I was going to say more words. No, we're yeah, going to cut you off right there. Yeah, no, yeah. You're, you're, I mean, you know what? In fact, I genuinely mean that. This is, this in fact, I just muted your mic, so don't say any words. 
I mean, that's kind of like pushing away that type of audience. If they want to see this, yeah, I'm just want to see this. Go well, ahead. It's what? I mean, I it can't hear it's just a courtesy. It's not. It's not a Jehovah Witness podcast. I have an opinion. <laughs> No, so you're the only one with the live mic right now. How are you oh, doing today? Good. Now we lost Woo! ours. Welcome back. Everybody has a live Welcome mic back. again. So we're oh, here. Did you already intro Austin? I did. Are you paying? We're, we're here to talk about 2010s. Holy shit. David Fincher's. We're actually here Network. in continuation of our previous Oscar winners. Whoa. And uh, this was Mr. Austin Young's pick, Whoa. specifically because it won a best editing Oscar. Um, we're talking about 2010s, David Fincher's, Ooh, and I'm going to say it. Oh. Although he didn't co-direct, he wrote the screenplay, which Aaron breathes maybe even more than the, <laughs> the directing to an extent in this, in this particular yeah, film. Kind of, uh, Aaron Sorkin and David Fincher's The Social Network. I'm talking about The Social <laughs> Network today. Hey, you're right there, buddy. You know, my bad, dude. I'll, uh, I'll give it up. Yeah, guys. man. Don't hit film in the face just because. Yeah, you know. <laughs> um, That's how this film filled me. This film was nominated for eight Oscars to be, I, th- I think I can name them all. Best Actor for Jesse Eisenberg. Absolutely. Best Adapted Screenplay for Aaron Sorkin. Best Directing for David Fincher. Best Sound Mixing. I don't remember if that year was combined still. Sound Mixing and Sound Editing. Or maybe it was separate still then. Best Sound Mixing. Um, best cinematography, and I don't know who DP'd this film. Jeff Cronenberg. Jeff Cronenberg. Jeff Cronenberg. Worth. Oh. Cronenberg. Um, who's the other guy? <laughs> no one. <laughs> okay. like best you know picture. Best original score That's for Atticus Ross and Atticus Ross and Trent Reznor. Trent Reznor, which are Nolan's guys now, by the way. Um. And still David Fenchers. He said they're, they're still around. But they were like music producers, man. They're, they have a really interesting story, those dudes. Um, I got seven. What's the eighth? Um, best Give us a hint. Give us a hint. Uh, original. No. Because it was adapted and I already named Picture, it. Picture, mixing, actor, DP, directing, score, adapted, and editing. Score. I, oh, okay. I, guess I, had, say- I guess I hadn't named editing in my yeah, uh, in your list, you didn't name in my list yet. Who edited the film? Is it Fenchers guy? Angus Wally and Kirk Baxter. Two dudes. <laughs> two dudes. <laughs> it's a devil's hey. three-way in the editing it's world, if you ask me. two men. And I wonder film. if there's ever been um, genuinely a, a male-female team. There probably has. To to be nominated for an Oscar. I mean, well, sure, nominated, you know, yeah. yeah. There probably has. Yeah, for editing. Well, I don't yeah. know. You like to wear the wig on the editing base sometimes. So. That's true. That might count, except I haven't been nominated for an Oscar. So here we are. We're talking about the social network, and uh, this film just... Wow. Wow. This yeah. film has sat in my top 10 for a long time. Um, mm. Yeah, it genuinely has sat in my top 10 for a long time. It has a plethora of accolades, not just in the Academy Awards, but it was nominated for the National Board of Review. It was nominated for Golden Globes. It was nominated for everything. On top of that, I mean, critics loved this film. On a $40 million budget, it, it, I think it made 500 mil or something like that. Um, and it made 224. Worldwide. 224 on a 40, $40 million budget. And I mean, it is a billion, multi billion dollar company. So, well, I mean, it's the most popular thing on earth, exactly. right? Especially in that time. And more than, more than that, it kept getting accolades decades after or a decade after it was made because. It's highly regarded as the best film of 2010s by multiple people. Yeah. Multi- I mean, the Rolling Stone, IndieWire, uh, Metacritic, everybody rated this the best film of 2010 itself and the best film of the 2010s era yeah. of a decade. I just remember... Including oh. Mr. Quentin Tarantino himself. Really? Said this is the best film of the 2010s by Quentin. far. And Aaron Sorkin, this is his quote... And Aaron Sorkin is the best living dialogist um, active right now. Yeah, I for sure the dialogue in the man sharp. My my favorite sharp. screenwriter actually sharp when it comes to dialogue especially. But this man, awesome awesome film. Uh, I'm excited to talk about it, and it's not even my pick. It's Austin's pick. So I want to ask Austin why. Oh wait. 
Do we also want to talk about what's up for editing this year? We sure do. But before we do, I want to know why. Hi, I'm Austin, and I'm two weeks sober. <laughs> two Hi, weeks. Congratulations. Austin. Thank Congratulations. you. Um, it's been a hard two weeks. It looks like it. I think it's going to end tonight. <laughs> Can I join you? <laughs> I... <laughs> What a heartbreaking moment at any AA meeting. I think this is the reason to go back. <laughs> I think this film is the reason to go Yeah, I'm going to jot that down. That's a good script. Sorry. Hey, hey, hey. That is a good script. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. Do you think um, that's why they call it AA? Hey, hey, so that way, like, when everybody's about to pick up on a hey. hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Put it down, Settle Gary. down. Settle, Settle down. down. Settle down. Um, I, honestly, I've been wanting to rewatch this for the longest time, and I was kind of looking over past winners, and obviously there's, like, the obvious choices, right? Like, Whiplash, 40 v Ferrari, sure. Dunkirk, but this is a definitely one that... <laughs> I know, bro. It, no, it's all good, dude. No, it's all good. Hey, come we're, back. We're, it's, we're, we could edit that out. It's, it's simple You can fix. edit that out. I don't know if I'm a good enough editor anymore. Anyways. Go on. Um... Where was I? <laughs> um, it's a very unorthodox way of editing where you manipulate timelines. Oh, and yeah. it can be done in a very good way. Or in a bad way. Or yeah. in a really bad way. And this does it almost perfectly. Yeah. Which is the reason why I think like Killers is going to win this year. Manipulate timelines. Say that and, and you know talk about that a little bit in layman's terms. In a way to tell... I want to say this is like four or five different stories going on at once and the audience not losing sight of what's going on. And like the, everybody follows what's going on. And nobody really changes. Yeah. Which is insane. Like to, to be able to keep up with that. What do you mean? Changes. Appearances throughout time. Like it's. Oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah. But it's usually yeah. the. the yeah. Part. Yeah. It'll indicate where you are in time. Yeah, right? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So that's kind of why. Very I cool. picked this one. Love it. I think also it's really interesting because. Your favorite director, Christopher Nolan, maker of Oppenheimer, not the actual guy, but like the movie. Um, the the film? Find that. Yeah. Has a very similar structure, which yeah. I think is super interesting. Which is why originally, I think I talked to you guys and wanted to do Dunkirk, mm. mm -hmm. which also won an Oscar for kind of a similar reason. That year, I remember it won over Baby Driver. What else have these guys oh. edited? I, I, I yeah. want to think that they're David Fincher's kind of go-to guys. What I do know is like the music. Atticus Ross and uh, Trent Reznor have been, I swear, I think they like used to do the score for like South Park or something. Like they came from something weird and then became Academy Award winning well, fucking. One of the editors just worked you know. on stuff like Fight Club. Okay. Yeah. yeah Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. Oh, okay. Fincher. You could tell. Oh, yeah. So. Uh, what about Atticus? I, I feel like they're Nolan's guys. I think they scored Oppenheimer, if I'm not mistaken. Atticus Ross and Trent Reznor or just Trent Reznor. I feel like. They're up for the Oppenheimer Award for, uh, for score. Uh, negative. No? No. Atticus Ross and Trent Reznor? Uh, last big thing that they worked on was TMNT, the most recent one. Hmm. What else have they done? Uh, Mank. They oh, did Soul. Venture. Watchmen. Waves. Um, that's like the most recent stuff hmm. that they worked on, but they do work on, they do work together. Okay. Who, then who did the Oppenheimer score? I feel like, why do I feel like it was Trent Reznor? Hans Zimmer. No, that's it wasn't. Not Hans it was Zimmer. not Hans. I love that guy. I, I don't know that Fincher's, I mean, uh, uh, Nolan is working even consistently with Hans anymore because you, you no, have like I one think, film I on, think one Hans film is off. doing a lot more touring right now. Uh, that's true. Yeah. Yeah, gone, gone. <clears throat> Fincher. Yeah, Directed? Still, yeah. Fincher. Still use them. Internet's a little slow. Well, moving on. Yeah. yeah. Um. Oh, here we go. Oh, it was uh, Ludwig uh, Gorn. Ludwig. 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 Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I took it Oppenheimer. Yeah. So, oh. who's up uh, this year? This for year for editing. For editing, we have Anatomy of a Fall mm. by yeah. Lawrence S Mitchell. Lawrence Mitchell. Yeah. The Holdovers by Kevin. Ten really, Killers by Thelma, Thelma Schoonmaker, Course. Oppenheimer by Jennifer Lame, and Poor Things by Jorgis. Gotta go, Jorgis. Jorgis Mavro Basali. Poor Things, 
Yeah. Did yeah, just, man, it's it's Oppenheimer killers. That's what you guys think. Banana. I also yeah. think that there's an extreme challenge that comes with like like in all departments yeah. whenever a film has that kind of three hour runtime and that's like the final decision because I mean we just recently had like a meeting talking about filmmaking and how when you're first making a film, you know, there's that big cut where there's too much there yeah. and then trying to bring it down to its essentials. But when yeah. You can see filmmakers like Nolan or um, Scorsese where yeah. they can... The essentials, I mean, it's they're, three hours. They're, they're, it's like, and, it's impressive. But they're masters of time. Exactly. I mean, manipulating time yeah, is You don't look crucial. at either of those films and, and feel the... Their runtime. Yeah, you don't feel but the But you runtime. can watch a 90-minute film that feels like three and a half hours. Yeah, that drags. You know? Um, speaking of which, by the way, they this, this film had an impressive... And David Fincher is notorious for getting... A lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of takes. We've talked about his films before on this podcast, haven't we? Uh, so he's one of those that likes a lot of takes? Seven? We did seven. So yeah, he, he, dude, we'll get into it. But the man loves multiple takes. 146 hours of footage to be... To How do you be, feel about that, Austin? To be shaved down to two hours. <laughs> That's why you have assistant editors. <laughs> two perfect hours. 146 yeah. hours of footage. But you that ended up get- amounting to... This was one of the first times they used... The, he went full-fledged digital film. This so is digital one? filmmaking. The, he at the time there were only four red, red ones, four red one cameras in existence. And of he those got one four, made. yeah, oh my of those goodness. four, we two saw it on side by side. Yes, ah, the, the robots. Yeah, right? yes. Oh my god, I forgot about that. Okay, well, yeah, can we go because I kind of forgot about that part. But so, right now, so essentially, David Fincher says, goes to re- the, the 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 guy who owns Oakley, the the, yeah. the creator of red cameras, and says. These things are fucking heavy, oh, man. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. What can we do? I need to put them on on boats that are paper thin, like they're they're potato chip thin. And this guy so says, "Okay, them. we get give him the weekend." He bores them out, puts them in fiberglass, carbon, smart. Fiber, smart. carbon fiber. I'm sorry, carbon fiber um, um, shells. Bodies, yeah. And says, "It's on my desk. You could have it on Sunday. Like it's it's red. This is what we're gonna do." And they ended up like cutting the weight in in uh, by a third. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and sure enough, but what I was also gonna say was. Of the four cameras that were in existence and that he used on this picture, two of them were owned by Steven Soderbergh. Oh, wow. And he lent them to, to Fincher so you could do the film because they weren't, the other film, other cameras didn't exist yet. Did That's he get a how, producer like, credit? At least he got was. a thank you in the credits. He got a special thank you in the credits. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, I mean, what an interesting kind of pair, or like mix, right? Because we're talking about, the the social network uh something that revolutionized the world yeah and and how yeah, groundbreaking that was and very much like we saw in side by side um the technology the was, was going to change dramatically after points like these seeing where digital could finally compete yeah. you know um, and i think this is why this film is so revolutionary we're going to talk about a revolutionary topic a very now topic we're going to talk about something that's universal that everybody knows about. Quite literally, we're going to use the most advanced forms of filmmaking for it. And you're not going to feel it, but we will. And we're going to revolutionize storytelling as a whole. Because this film is everything. This film is a courtroom drama. This film is a drama. This film it has comedic elements to it. This film is a performance piece. This film is a masterclass on directing, on editing, on screenwriting. I mean, this film is everything. And... As an example of kind of even just pushing the medium forward of filmmaking, this film had more special effect shots than Godzilla in the same year. Really? A well, thousand special effect shots versus 960 that Godzilla had. Yes, and that's a technicality, right? Yeah, I was it's, about to say. It's, it's Elaborate. sewing the well, fucking head of Army Hammer on, on a model as opposed to doing split-screen shooting and split-screen editing. Mm. It's, it's literally like he hired... Army Hammer to play both characters, and then he hired a model, Josh to, Pence. John Pence, who, he, who Josh he was Pence. Josh, Josh Pence. Pence, who he was a uh, Ralph Lauren mar- model or something like that, right? Uh, to stand next to him, and and his body is acting because he wanted the realness of it all, <laughs> as opposed to just like, and he would record Army Hammer saying the line and cut his face out digitally and stick it on this dude's face. That was part of it. 
No, what I mean that was the fuck? bulk of the special effect shots, but you don't you don't notice in the slightest. No, not at all. Like that. And um, it, it blends so well yeah. that you you really see. I mean, God, even uh, in the cinematography, yeah. they worked very hard to like connect you with like his face partially being out of focus, and you're just seeing the brother, and you think like, mm-hmm. okay, they could have, you know, they could have. Faked it a million ways. They could have gone for the easier route, but he's like, no, I want it to feel like, even if I have to do a take where his face is out of focus at that position, just so we can get that. It's like, imagine a guy who loves to do 40 takes to begin with (laughs) per, you know, per per role and army hammer. I'm sure didn't get paid twice as much. Like, uh, he's also kind of canceled right now, but we're going to have to talk about that. Yeah. What I, what I do want to talk about in the editing is, I don't know if you were going to bring this up at some point later right now, but I, it was really interesting to me how they cut this. It was the, the first film to ever win an Oscar using final cut pro (laughs) ever. Sorry. Oh, I mean, come on, though. I mean, that's what you learned on. I mean, it's not seven, seven, but I mean, 10 is like, I I didn't say 10. Do you just... I said Final Cut Pro. I said the software. I don't know well, what version they edited on. More than likely it was 10. Oh, no, wait. It was 2010. Seven. Seven, yeah, it was 7. Yeah, 2010, yeah. So, yeah. take your vomit back, sir. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, <laughs> can we get, just, a, can I, get a repeat there? Yeah. On the, oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, honestly, I forget how old this film is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you don't because it's still very relevant, yeah. which I want to. I'll talk about. Exactly. It's, this comes into play for something that none of us probably knew about, but yeah. we'll get there. Um, not only was it, and this is where where I think again, tools, 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 from special effects to uh, to the editing softwares. We're gonna cut the film on Final Cut Seven and do all the special effects and After Effects. That's what they did for this picture. Oh, dude, that must dude, have been a like a I mean, maybe logistically, right? Especially yeah. as an editor, but again, tools. How yeah. can we use the tools at our disposal to make a fucking picture that doesn't require that. any of this shit? Yeah, yeah. But now you yeah. now you know why that's forty After million dollar effects. budget. I mean, to an extent, right? But fucking a man, like th- th- that's the filmmaking I love is when you don't feel you don't need to show off the bells and whistles. You're doing it to tell an effective story. I mean, yep. it's it's everything. Yes. Um. So Austin, you kick this off. Who do you want to go first? Do you want to go first, rating wise? We've been uh, doing a, a nasty habit, audience, which I apologize for, of giving you our ratings at the fucking, to, you know, t- before 10 minutes of wrapping I the episode. Just, or something. Cool. Well, I, mean, I think we what we should do bit. is, uh, I mean, have your rating in mind. Let's say that. And then after we all kind of give them out, then we can kick off into everything. Yeah. Because that's what usually happens. We'll kick off our rating, but then we'll we'll talk about all these technicalities, yeah. and that bleeds into a longer conversation. So if you guys like I, that, I let have, us know. I don't know. I'm just you know. Yeah, true, but true. I, I just, have my like rating. That. Like I, I already have my number. I, so I. I want to get really crazy with this. We're gonna go the lao. Okay. All right. And then we're gonna go Castro. Okay. Oh shit. And then we're gonna go Carlos. Wow. Oh no. And then I'm gonna leave. <laughs> the lao go. Nine point five. Nine point five. Okay. Castro, nine point three. Nine point three. Yeah, man. I really. Cool. Is that what you meant? Is like we just give ratings yeah. and then we go off? Carlos. Is it hard? <laughs> no, <laughs> this, but, but this, so many. No, not not in the slightest. This is a dime for me. This is a ten. Do you this have is a, a dime for me? I don't have a dime on me. Is it, this is only like maybe your second or third dime? No, he's had a couple. No, no, probably my I fifth died? or something like that. Yeah, yeah this is no. a ten for me. I, I got my receipts, guys. So I got my reasoning. No, no, here. but I'm just saying, like, you like La La Land. You like, uh, you know. He likes film. Dude, this film might as well be a fucking love. musical with Austin. how good the dialogue is fucking Austin. written, man. How yeah, musical no, the dialogue is. That's the first thing I noticed, for sure. Austin. The <laughs> no. Uh, rating. Um. It ain't no dime. <laughs> Are you going to apologize to the people? I didn't say that. He said that. You. You're a, you, oh, you're is that that loud? I'm sorry. Dude, I'm having a hard time with my mic today. I feel like Let's it's just pause. being weird. All right, my rating. There we go. Are you done? So I cannot meet you? <laughs> Jeez, yes, I'm done. I, just, I feel bad for the audio listeners. I know. Man. I'm on the slightest. I'm an audio listener. Damn. I am too. <laughs> Not in the my commute. Then take this. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Jeez. Go on. I'll give it a 9.9. 9.9. Oh wow! Okay. Let's let's start there. Why why yeah. are we missing the point Where's, one? Where's it lacking? Why are we missing the point nine? Point one. Point the point one. one. <sighs> what is it called? Uh, I don't know how to explain it. Like I wanted to give it a ten, but I feel like there's just something missing, and I can't really pinpoint it. Or could it be? It's kind of like what Carlos said. It's one of those movies that it's just it shouldn't be this good. 
Yeah, it shouldn't no, be. It has no mm, right being this mm. good. But that's why I'm saying, like, is it that thing, like... But that's well, not... That's a compliment of anything, right? It's, no, no, no. It's, it's, a, it's definitely a compliment. It surpasses your expectations of what this a type of film like this should be. But maybe he's thinking, like, maybe that 1% is, like... It's room for diluting, or what is it that they say in the movie? <laughs> in case there's more investors wanting to come in, yeah, yeah, dilute yeah. the shares. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I will say it's not in my top 10, but it's maybe, like, my top 15. Wow. Uh, yeah, it's up there. Yeah, it's definitely my top, like, 27 for sure. <laughs> And it's number 27. <laughs> um, Stop going down, Mike. Um, it's because the more you pull it out. Yeah, the more you pull it out. <laughs> you got to balance it out, That's my dude. That's power after dark. Kind of yeah, man. Um, Hold on. Right there. And Wait. I'm keeping you muted until you're done. Okay. Somebody else can talk while I do this if you guys want. Well, but, um, I'm just making sure everybody knows who the real Mike is. <laughs> Use the real mic. So let's start with the law. The law. You, this is your first time seeing it. Yeah. Thoughts. Yeah. Thoughts. And you gave it a nine point five. Nine point five. And you're uh, feisty. Thoughts. No. Uh, it's kind of nice actually to have the law in a feisty mood. I won't say bad mood. A feisty mood. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. still be convinced that this is. It kind of yeah. gets me going a little. You know. Makes yeah. you feel a little fuzzy inside. <laughs> yeah. 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 Fuzzy um, little character. You. <laughs> You chestnut of a man, you <laughs> fucking nipple, Mr. Triple fuck. Nipple, <laughs> you nipple fucking one. Go on, sir. Okay. What's your word? <laughs> Show uh, your work. God, go um, on, you sexy glasses, motherfucker. Glasses, jacket, shirt, man. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I oh my god, there's so much in this film, and what I think is really interesting is. One, it it is a it's it falls into a genre category of being a biopic. It, sure. It's it's talking about it. a, a real person uh, and a real circumstance that they went through, and you know, in that genre, it's always very interesting to see how a director and a writer want to portray the real person. You know, some people, I mean, look at like a the way Scorsese does his biopics. You know. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I'd even I I don't have any confirmation of this, but tell me that tell me that the Social Network didn't influence Wolf of Wall Street, yeah. even, even in the way of how it's told and the way it's cut. I mean, the, yeah, I, I would um, argue that it is. I don't have any confirmation on that, but geez, man, and I just mean like you know, uh, there's so much room there's to play with. There's so much room to play with. Mm-hmm. Uh, you want to do justice to the real story, like I mean, you know, we've uh, heard of. People seen biopics or or seen things made on them, and then mm. they get super upset, and they're like, "Oh, that that's not real. This didn't happen." And all this that was one of them, by the way. Yeah, and um, that's such an interesting kind of feel to play in because you know you're you're not just writing a fun story. You're really you're talking about somebody's life. I mean, that's kind of one of the reasons why Citizen Kane we talked about like it was shot down by everybody because it was referencing a very real person. Um, I'm I'm glad you touched on that. I just want to stay in that comment for a touch because this this statement's going to create a lot of controversy in 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 this room, and I'm curious because I forget who it was, Austin. I don't know if you can look it up, but I think it was IndieWire, uh, maybe it was Rolling Stone. Somebody a bit maybe it was even in the New York Times. High publication, uh, a respected film critic was like, the Social Network is the Citizen Kane of the meta era. I mean, that's, yes. think about that for a second. That's yeah. a that's a strong I, statement, but I kind of back it, man. I kind of back how Citizen Kane. We talked about it on this podcast. Go back to see that episode. That Citizen Kane is about everything, right? Citizen Kane is not just a courtroom drama. It's not just a a, a biopic in a sense. It's not just a, a character piece, but it's it's fucking everything. Uh, the directing is revolutionary. The writing is revolutionary. The performances are revolutionary. I mean. This is this is that for the new era of cinema. It was um, a blog post that the LA Times picked up. The LA Times, um, the Citizen Kane, of, and and I'm I'm paraphrasing, and I know I'm not getting the word right, but it's the Citizen Kane of the digital era, or something like that. Um, bold, very very true statement, I think. Yeah, um, that's tough, man. That that kind of film only comes around once every, well, probably once every decade. Um, most people have the social network in their top tens list, period. Um, for some reason, right now, it's sitting on people's top tens of the 2010s with, like, uh, Moonlight, 
which won an Academy Award for Best Picture, uh, Mad Max Fury Road, which revolutionary on technical fronts, on story fronts, um, overrated, I feel, but but uh, nonetheless, it's it's sitting high up in in these top tens lists. It's in the thousand one f- uh, films you should watch before you die. Um, it's in it's it's in every list. It's in every especially contemporary list. But it also at the same time isn't in uh, AFI's top one hundred. It's not in the sight and sound poll. <laughs> you know. So this is why I I want to talk about kind of those things. Does it belong on such prestigious lists? You guys know it already belongs. It's number nine of my top ten currently. Oh, man. You think it's still too early? Maybe. It's a sit with it and see what happens. Maybe. Kind of it's been 14 years. 14 years to sit with it and it's still, it almost still, it still feels more relevant than ever. Oh, yeah. That's, you know? that's the main thing. That and I think with me, I have a question for you. Sure. For all of you. What's the arc for you here? What's this film about? Oh, man. I. I sure, there are multiple storylines and multiple timelines. What's this film about? What's this film about, Castro? You know what? I kind of. I'm going to go on a wild fucking. I kind of compared it to the Breaking Bad Walter White story where he wants to prove that he's more worth more than that, I guess. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's the arc for you? Yeah, I guess the arc is... So do you... Okay, okay. So then do you, in that scenario, do you... And, and by he, you mean... Uh, Mark. Uh, Mark Zuckerberg? Yeah. In that scenario, he's the hero in the picture? No, he, he come, came across as an asshole, screwed everybody up, screw, screwed everybody over. Because Walter White, by definition too, right, is an anti-hero. Right. Is Jesse... Is... is uh, is Mark Zuckerberg an anti-hero? That's what I'm thinking. That's interesting. It's yeah. an interesting hold question on, to on. pose. Should we all turn our phones off or put them in another room? Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> uh, our, our Facebook accounts are going to be act- deactivated. Instagrams, Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying, should we put them in another room? Um, I mean, this is also going to go on our YouTube. What? He's not going to open up and be like, hey. Well, we don't put it on. Well, we probably can't share this episode on Facebook now. What's this okay. film about? Facebook. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> Um, you know, I think at the end of the day, and and the last shot is so amazing. Uh, yeah, that's this, what I was the, bring up. the whole notion of it. This guy wasn't like trying to be a god. He wasn't trying to be the world's best anything. He's this kid who got his heart broken by a girl, and he just wants to get over that. You know, and it's so. Uh, I didn't even say get over. It was more like. To show her that is worth more than what she thinks. I just think it shows like the fragility of uh, you know the the human character. Like as I mean, big as this thing grew into, and as big as uh, this whole monster built into, the social network is still. Rooney. But wasn't that only part of like the, the you know the the girl aspect? You know, I think for the you know those two guys, it was one of those things where you guys just came up with the idea. I had the, this is bigger than you guys, this little idea that you guys thought of. I just feel like it kept coming back to this idea of like, I think that's I who thought Mark we Harper were friends were. and like him being hurt by the girl. And, and it's just like, as, as big as this idea sounded and yeah. all this money and numbers and everything like that, it's still a matter of like, just the very human element of like, you're just a kid in college who just wants your friends and you want to get with the girl and, I don't know. You kind of screw yourself over sometimes. Like, yeah. I don't know. I, I found that core in it all because it didn't matter that they were in suits and they were traveling across the country and all that. It was like, wait a minute, you're my friend. Why aren't you backing me up? And it like, you know, it's like, oh, sorry. Like this guy told me that I could go farther with him. It's like, okay, but dude, like I'm, I'm your best friend. I'm your only friend. And then like, even with that girl, it's kind of like, oh um, yeah, I made this big thing now. So, you know, like you probably feel bad for like, leaving me or like he tries to uh, he tries yeah. to insane, yeah. and then she's like oh well have fun with your video game and then at the very end he's just like friend request and it's like refresh like refresh and and like even him he made this whole social network that's now a world um dominating force yeah. all just so he can try to get back you know I feel like it was pushing that but i didn't i didn't really get that i mean obviously the ending is obviously on on the nose on that but i didn't really get that here's the here's here's my my ten cents on it. Yeah. To me, sure, this film is about betrayal. It's about friendship. It's about lack thereof. It's about jealousy and envy and and uh, Greed, but, but yeah. the ultimate the ultimate arc to me 
is Zuckerberg's trajectory from sure he knows he can hack into the mainframe of Parvert. Right. He knows his ability, but he has this predestined notion of the nerd. He has this predestined notion of who he is in society mm -hmm. and wants exclusivity, wants to jump out of that class of social. Oh, he wants to be order. cool. He wants to be cool. Yeah. He just wants to be cool. He doesn't want to be a nerd. How do we do that? Well, my friend who's handsome, has money, and gets girls, um, he, he gets into the final club, which is societal jumping in college, especially in, 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 the, in an elite you know, school like Harvard. Right. It's societal jumping. Okay, I'm envious of that. I want that. Okay, I'm on a date with a girl. I've gotten this far. It's going pretty well. But if she breaks my heart, we're just going to deduce it to I'm a nerd and she didn't like me. <laughs> Story of my life. No. She tells him. She's not. Erica Albright, by the way, doesn't exist. Her character doesn't exist. In fact, why Mark Zuckerberg was already dating his now wife at that time. So why would she put it in there? Because she's the metaphor of the whole film. Because it's guy meet, guy dates girl, guy wants girl, girl breaks guy's heart. It's Erica Albright is society in this picture. Erica Albright is is the the society shift that that Mark Zuckerberg wants. That's his want. So you think that's the main arc? Yeah, I think that's the main arc because it over encompasses his the friendship dynamic with with uh, Eduardo. It it over encompasses why he's so attracted to Sean Parker, because Sean Parker is cool. good with women. He's cool. He's suave. He's a millionaire. You know, he he made something cool to so that society thought at least was cool for a little while. You know, it's all to impress Erica. And what is Erica? Erica is society. Uh, oh, the nerd can be cool. I think that's the the arc. I think that's the full arc, which is why that shot at the end is the best thing. Even in the, the world. whole uh, visual message yeah. of she's on Facebook, but even her face isn't like shown. Like she's still looking away from like yeah. the camera but, in her profile picture. Like you can't even have that time, tangible. But at the same time, his creation superseded her desire to not want anything to do with him she's still on his site because and whereas some cool suave dude will be like that's right she's on my fucking website she uses facebook it's my site he just wants to be her friend <laughs> he just wants and uh, he has to, so the acceptance. he can't even get that you yeah know? he can't even get that satisfaction so why screw <laughs> over the friend because it, <laughs> the sean because he would Sorry. lose the cool factor if he didn't he would lose the coolness so he's an asshole. Yes, but that last shot humanizes him. Nah. It humanizes him to a core. Yeah. It just means that, yo, you doing you fucked up your friend just for your girl? The, again, the representation of society. It's bigger than that. I fucked my friend over because I didn't want to lose this feeling of cool. Power. This feeling. It wasn't I don't even think it was power. I think it was just the feeling of cool. The feeling of my sight's cool. This guy is making it cool. He's convincing me that it's making it cool. Um, and he's making moves that continuously keeps Facebook cool. Where, Like that scene where Eduardo flies in, covered in rain, and walks in and says, well, yeah, I've been riding subways for 11 hours a day trying to get, you know, he's like, oh, yeah, I know all about that. You got some tuxedo company. You got this. You got that. I got a half Fuck, a million dude, dollar yeah. hedge fund to invest in our thing because it's cool. Yeah. You know, um, I think the key... Arc, as reductive as it sounds, is cool. It, 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 the arc is Mark Zuckerberg wants to remain cool. He wants to, he's cool to society. People go up to him and like, dude, good job with the Facebook. Like, it's his. Wow. It's yeah. cool and it's his. Um, it's the nerd making good, you know, because Bill Gates is a billionaire, but he ain't cool, you know? That's who nerds look up to in that realm, right? And coding and computers is Bill Gates. Bill Gates ain't cool, yeah. you know? The nerd. But it Tom from MySpace? That dude, cool. Or Napster. <laughs> or Napster. You know what I'm saying? Cool. Yeah. That's the societal aspect that Eric Albright represents in this film. And dear God, what an amazing way to portray that in a screenplay. Um, oh my gosh, man. This is and but this is by the way also why I think David Fincher needs to direct more films like this. Cool, dude. You're good at thrillers. But this, man, this mank, uh, you know, even Gone Girl to a certain extent. 
do that more. Do this more, man. The social network is just fucking everything. Again, everything in a film. But do what more like? Do more drama. Do more. more drama. Do more human stories. Do more. Do, do explore the human condition uh, uh, more. Go, go back to Fight Club. I don't know. I don't know. Sure. That's that's a little more. No, no, I'm saying more a little more of an arc, right? I mean, a little more meaty on the human human condition, but um, that's why I think this this film really is about everything, man. This film can encompass the human condition of just your wants taking over your your morals, you know, in society. The obvious question that's going to come up next is Jesse Heisenberg. Uh huh. Heisenberg. 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 Eisenberg, Eisenberg without the Breaking H. Bad. Yeah, yeah, nominated for an Oscar for this film. Was he picked? The what I by Mark? No, or, dude. Or Mark how? was adamantly against the making of this oh, film. Oh, for real? Oh, he hates this film. So did this guy even mimic his his character on Mark? Let me or? let me tell you what what Mark Zuckerberg had to say about this film. Mark Zuckerberg screened the film. He he originally was not going to. He had to. He hated it, and then he's like, "I'm going to take all my Facebook employees to see it." Because, you know, fuck it. The only thing he got out of this film is that after he had never drank in an apple martini, an apple teeny, okay. and now he drinks apple teenies because of this. But that's what that's he says. It. Uh-huh. He said, the only thing this film got right, he's like, it amazes me. He went on Oprah and said, this, it amazes me how, uh, what, they, how, what they hyper-focused on when it comes to getting the details right. They focused on my clothes. Every piece of clothing that that character wears, I have. Yeah, like, it. I own. I've worn but that's the only thing they got right about this whole. Well, obviously thing. he's gonna say he does. He's not a fucking. Um, as Saverin settled and can't really say anything, he's but also doesn't care for the portrayal. Doesn't care for the film. Um, none of them really. What what ended up happening is the Winklevosses, the Winklevi, as they call, as they say <laughs> the in the film, the Winklevosses. All of this is true on paper. The lawsuits were real. Right. The individuals in the company were real. I mean, everything is real on paper. Where you take liberty in it's storytelling the is the it. drama. The drama part. Right. Um, but the lawsuits, the depositions, the the Winklevoss is claiming that he stole the idea. I mean, everything. Everything is. Well, is Napster? Napster, yeah. Sean Parker is, is identified as a. Oh, as shit. A, okay. Yeah. You uh, didn't know Napster was real? No, 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 yeah. I'm just like, saying, like, no, that that, his involvement like, in Facebook. All of that is true. The only thing I guess I'm kind of not liking is the, that they didn't have anything to do with the uh, with the real character. The only one that met his real counterpart, uh, uh, David Fincher was adamantly against it. He said, I don't want any of you to meet any of them. It's going to inform your performance, right? If they think the script isn't true, which they disagree, ah, dude, that's not how he said that. Don't do that. No, it doesn't let you as a performer, it doesn't let you as an actor make your yeah. own judgment on how to play this guy, right? No, uh, yeah, so, mean, so Fincher didn't want that. However, the only one that kind of broke the rules was um, Justin Timberlake. He yes. met Sean Parker. But Sean Parker said, man, I know about this. I read the script. I read the book that it's based on. Um, my, um, whatever I tell you isn't going to help you because the character in the script isn't me. It's a fabrication. So whatever I tell you to do, it ain't me. Okay. You know? So... That's his way of saying, dude, this movie's bullshit, yeah, dude. Yeah, like, yeah, it's like, take you know. it what you want with it. I mean, dude, he's considered the, the sure, the cool guy, um, the antithesis of, of the Mark Zuckerberg character, but he's also a drug addict. He also chases after young women uh, illegally, <laughs> you know, to yeah. an extent. He parasited himself into He the parasited family. himself into the company, right? I mean, yeah, it's, it's um, where do you draw the line? Another thing to consider about this film, I've never heard of this happening before. And if it does, please tell me. I've never heard of this happening before. When they wrote the script, this film, uh, uh, essentially the, the writer had been something, the, the writer of the novel. The, the, it's based on a novel called The Accidental Millionaires. And oh, Wow. Yeah. <laughs> what year? I think it, okay, this is the weird part. This is where it's kind of weird. The script of this film ended up leaking online. And before that, it was blacklisted in 08. It was on the blacklist. Mm. Um, so they wanted to make this picture for, for a couple of years, at least. The weird trajectory of things was, I forget if it was Saverin or the Win- Winklevosses, went to the writer, Ben, whatever, and said, hey, man, we got some info for you. We think you should write something about this because it's like a you know, cool story. Like they stole this idea from us. Da, 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 da. And he liked this. That's a pretty cool idea. Da, da, da. And then 
somehow 14 pages of the 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 uh screenplay no of the book of of the pitch to write the book for it to get published leaked and when it leaked sorkin and fincher were like yo this shit's good let's do something about this sorkin goes to ben and says hey what do you think should we tell a story we should let's construct something they get a hotel for however many however time many days or whatever and he's writing the book finishing chapters and handing them to Aaron Sorkin so he can write the screenplay <laughs> in the same room the book wasn't even published they just knew this is gold they just knew this is this is special this yeah. is real so like to the extent to where whoever was giving them information ben or whatever uh, whether it was the Winklevosses or uh, Saverin, I forget which one. I think it was Saverin, uh, Eduardo. Eduardo. Um, he gave him all the info he kind of had up to that point. And yeah, then it was once Saverin. it was Saverin, once this started happening, he never spoke to him again. Yeah. Naturally. Naturally, right? yeah, of course. And, and, and he didn't, he kind of made Saverin the victim, right? He wasn't a bad guy. He, he was wasn't. actually the guy funding all this shit, yeah, trying to make this work. Like he kind of made him the guy to root for. Right. And to he was extent. also like kind of the good guy where yeah. he was like, Hey dude, the moral, I'm dude, just right? your friend. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not here to like yeah. chase the, the cloud or anything. Like you had a good idea. Let's work together yeah. to make this yeah. like better. And like, like what any and, friends doing. And that even kind of his was art doing. was, he was always trying to impress his dad. Oh, yeah. My father's going to be That's such an interesting oh, yeah. thing. Because a of those I, I mean, God, and, and that goes to uh, Sorkin, right? Yeah. Like, I got to tell my dad uh, about the animal yeah. abuse. <laughs> Dude, like, that goes to Sorkin yeah. in the small ways that we, I'm, any other like person would have looked at those moments, or like, let's say if that was a big part of the character, right? Mm -hmm. And said, oh, we're going to have to have a scene where we see him interacting with his dad right. and we see him yeah. defeated and sulking and all this kind of stuff. But no, it's like, no, we don't let, let that mystery be there. We don't know what the dad does. We don't know who he is and Listen, all this kind of stuff. We're just going to just his anxiety right, alone. Credit deserves deserve to be going to circum for this. Correct me. Fact check my ass off. Now I think the first draft of the script, the only draft of the script that was turned into the studio and to Fincher and to everybody was 176 pages long. It was either 176 or 146. I think it was 176. 176 pages long. 162. What? 162. 162. A minute per page. What does that translate to time-wise, guys? That's almost three hours. Almost three, hours. Almost three hours. The studio said, you need to cut out 30 pages. You make this thing 30 minutes shorter. Fincher said, I'm not going to listen to the studio, but I want you to prove to me, Eric Sorkin, what do you think the runtime is going to be on this? And Sorkin said, this thing's going to be two hours on the nose. And, sorry, and Fincher said, read it to me. And if you can read it in two hours out loud to me, we won't count out any pages. And he did. Nice. Because the dialogue is this huge, but timing, pacing of the dialogue is fucking everything, right? Perfect. And But they got away with it to an extent. Why do you think there's dialogue in the open intro of the, of the studio? And uh, was it a Columbia? I think it's Columbia, right? Yeah. The Columbia logo, you're already hearing the dialogue. Yeah. That's how you get away with... Making it, you know, not yeah, right a, from the start, right yeah. from the start. Let's let's utilize all of our time from yeah. the get go. And yeah. every that's why, like, I was a little worried because this was the last first time watching it when we were starting. We're like, sh you know, shuffling, trying to get ready. That there's a, a key piece of dialogue where he says, uh, uh, the, the people in China, there's so much of a population who get 1600 on their SATs, and she's enthralled, she's interested in everything he's saying, she's in, man, until she isn't, you know, so like, even that. Those two lines where the Columbia logo is up are super important to the Man. trajectory of the relationship than the breakup here. To, that's going to be our MacGuffin for the whole story. Like, it's it's so cool, man. It's so fucking cool. Um, so, yeah, Fine. Aaron Sorkin gets... Well, he got an Oscar, so... He gets everything. Gets every credit for this film, I think, man, because... But at the same time, if you don't have a seasoned director like David Fincher, what are you going to do? No, oh, yeah. Um... Fun fact, Sorkin directed The Last Shot. Really? He just, he just wanted to? He was No, like, he didn't want to. In fact, what happened was David Fincher said, all right, guys, I'm done, and left the set. And he did it so that the, the, the crew could come to Sorkin and be like, he's really not coming back. Like, how do we shoot this? And he kind of forced them into directing. Really? Yeah. Why? Force him to direct him because he, if Sorkin is now a director, in case you didn't know, he directed Molly's Game, he directed The Trial of Chicago 7. He's a good director, man. Um, and he always kind of wanted to jump that that wall. He wanted to become a director. And I think Fincher was like, ah, dude, he just, 
finish, finish it. Was it the one where he, he absent? The refresh. Yeah. Fun little fact. I think because the episode for It's Always Sunny, <laughs> my bad. It's, all, it's called the Social Network episode. Oh, uh, okay. And at the end, they're trying to get, get a hold of, be friends with some guy. And he's like, all right, click refresh. Click refresh. So it just made you laugh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's just yeah. like refresh. Like, that's the whole yeah. thing. Um, but yeah, man. Um, Sorkin, uh, Sorkin had a little more. Uh, I don't know any writer, really, to be honest with you, that um, is that hands-on. Yeah. Anyways, like that's on set and, you know, still most most directors don't want the writers on the set anymore because then they almost subtly start directing the picture. Right. Like, well, that's not how I wrote it or that's not how I did this. Who's um, the one that they do have on set? What do you mean? The one that keep it to keep the whole uh, like script, a script supervisor. supervisor. Yeah. That's not the same thing. No, no. Uh, the script oh, supervisor. I'm not. Obviously not the same thing, but they won't don't won't do that. They, what do you mean? they wouldn't want to be the script supervisor? No, 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 because they're two separate things. The script supervisor is more looking out for continuity. continuity. It's more looking out for literally if the if the actor saying the lines as written is literally looking out for that. And the writer of, wouldn't want to be there to I do don't that? Think, that's more of a technical thing for editing yeah. uh, more than it is a creative choice for how he should deliver the mm -hmm. lines. And then, yeah, these guys are going to be annoying the shit. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. yeah. So, um, yeah, man, I, I can't say enough good things about Aaron Sorkin on this. And, and, and Absolutely. And again, even Fincher, man, like, I always wondered why we're going to intercut at the beginning. Oh, man, it's so good. It's so good. Fincher, too. What do you guys put Fincher on you guys' list? He's on my... He's, he's that thing piled up to, like, two. No, he's high up there. He's high up there. He's probably in my top ten it's current. Ten? Kind of because yeah. it's not no, kind of your style. Top ten Maybe current. kind of style. Top ten current. Current. You? Top 11, 12. I no, like top ten. Top ten. He's getting good, man. I, I want to point this out on the directing front. When you first watch the film, when I first watched the film, you're seeing him get the idea to do this thing. He's, he's going through the breakup. He's running back to his dorm. He's going to get this. He's getting drunk. He's, gonna, he's blogging simultaneously. The only time there's ever voiceover in the film, by the way, is when he's blogging, right? Yeah. His, his intrusive thoughts, you know? And while he's doing this thing that's very easy to him, hacking into the mainframe, fucking stealing contacts and pictures and doing his thing, we're intercut. Oh, it's so genius, man. It's so ge we're intercutting to a party scene. Girls on a bus, on a party bus, being taken to a club. No, to uh, to, to the, the fraternity or to the Phoenix. Yeah, Phoenix. The Phoenix. The Phoenix. And who's at the Phoenix door? A doorman. Somebody who's checking. You know uh, the exclusivity. Who gets in and, and who doesn't get in? Well, we're intercutting that with Mark Zuckerberg hacking his way in. Not asking for permission, yeah. oh, not wow. knocking on the door, using his skill to break in that's to genius. build that's his genius. dynasty. To the point that I think that's genius. Somebody has that's their genius. computer at the party. Yeah. And like even if he can't get in, you right. know, he's in. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's insanely <laughs> well directed, man. Who won for directing that year? That's I don't I don't I don't even shit. know what he would have been up against, but geez, man. Jeez, David Fincher needs to do it. But again, those are those so, are the winner was uh, Tom Hopper with the King's Speech. Uh huh. Who went up against Darren Aronofsky for Black Swan. Uh, sure. David O. Russell for The Fighter. And mm. the Cohen Brothers with True Grit. Mm, <laughs> all good picks. The King's Speech swept that year. Yeah, it won for your best picture. Yeah. In fact, I think for best actor, it also won for Forrest Whitaker that year. Or if not Forrest Whitaker, uh, the British actor. Uh, yeah. Forget it. Colin, Colin Firth? King's Speech uh, was nominated 12 times to come four wins. What are the four? Uh, Colin Firth. Colin Firth. For actor, best picture, writing. O original. Original was David Sedler and Tom Hopper took directing. Oh. Wow. Dude, it's, it's fucking genius, man. It's, it's genius directing on so many levels. But if you think about it, those intercuts, they're thriller tools. It's almost like a cop procedural. It's... The cop is trying to get the case. Yeah. The killer's on the loose. Oh, yeah. They're thriller tools. Where you're dude, watching it's... two different things going on at the same time. Uh, you see it a lot in... Um, it's funny. I, I think of like The Dark Knight because uh -huh. that's where I first really noticed that cut where you're seeing as th like things are being pieced together. You're seeing the crime happening somewhere uh -huh. else, you uh -huh. know, and it's that like mix. And true, it leaves the audience on that yeah. weird place where you're at the edge of your seat, but uh, you're... I think the tension's built up yeah. by the fact that you know something's going to happen yeah. here yeah. and these people are completely unaware yeah. of it, you know? Like at the party. They're yeah. completely unaware 
that within minutes, some guy their is just in their room. Yeah. are going to be on a page where they're being compared. Yeah. Hot socially or hot or not. Where isn't that the point of going to a club and smash dancing with other women? Hot or not, smash or pass. Yeah, take yeah. Or it's the same societal shit. But because it's online and it, okay, it's not it's with your stinky. consent or your, it's, it's weird, right? It's a weird kind of territory, but. Uh, I, and geez, it's crazy that it was man. still in its infancy. The yeah. social media stuff. Yeah. Yeah, MySpace, Everything right? Everything was in its infancy. 14 I mean, years later. <sighs> bad. Dude, like, uh, that. that's why, again, it's at, it's such a talking point that Facebook was really a catalyst for, like, a society we live in today, <laughs> which now, when you look at social media, it's way more than just you connecting with your grandma, oh like, across gosh, the street. Dude. Or it's way more than so cool. uh, you Not connecting with people in college. Like, oh, my God. Yeah. But also, like, it also shows you, like, okay, oh, only the old people use Facebook now. Well, Facebook also owns Instagram, dude. So, like, they're, 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 they own Instagram. Yeah, they so, just... So, they, they own all of it, man. Yeah, they yeah, own all of it. They own so fucking much, dude. Yeah. It's crazy. It's just upgrading. Yeah. And I mean, at you... the same time, like, it's... I, I remember the exact moment of what made me want to switch to Facebook. Me too. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. I'll tell you mine if you tell me yours. I'll tell you. Um, <laughs> Are we all seeing the day that we signed? Yeah, up? if you guys know, it was weird. I remember. Was weird. I didn't it have a weird. Clip, but I remember. Mine was a very similar societal reason. I was on MySpace because that was the thing to have, right? And then a girl I thought was cute said, "Facebook me." I was like. Kind of oh the same my thing. God. What the fuck is that? I swear that's yeah, exactly yeah, yeah. what happened. Were you yeah, like yeah. here in I'm the like, classroom? I was like at a church event, right? <laughs> here at church? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was like Facebook. She's like Facebook. Man, I knew like, but I, I always thought pants. that was like that's this. Not, that's not this no. other. I've I don't heard know, of it. like a, a college thing or like a thing. I was probably like sixteen or yeah, something. Yeah, I've heard of it. Yeah. And, and I hadn't heard of it, but I was like Facebook. Me. Oh, okay, because I gotta get a Facebook. And I thought, oh, it's gonna be the other one. You know, I'm on MySpace right now. This is where it's at. Yeah, it's gonna be the other one. And then fucking, I don't, I can't remember the last time I used my MySpace. But that's what happened to me. It was a girl, man. It was a girl telling me like, "Hey, Facebook me." No, with me, it yeah. was at a pool party, and there was these two girls on on the truck, and then yeah. they, they they took a photo and like, "Hey, send it through me to MySpace." It was like, "No, no, Facebook is a lot better because it's more privacy." And I was like, "Facebook?" It's like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." And they got my phone and they downloaded. It. I was like, "Okay, this is Facebook," and that's how I learned like Facebook because yeah. I was still in the MySpace thing, man. I was a sophomore in high school. We oh, had the, um, you remember how they would bring us the laptops in the carts? Uh huh. Yeah, the cows. Yeah. Oh my God. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I haven't you heard that in forever. <laughs> you forgot about the you cows. Just, <laughs> you just unlocked oh, the memory. Oh my yeah. God. Yeah. I can't believe you guys were oh just my like, God. take a second. Hold on. God. Man, the cows. Jesus. I know. I love how that just like whoosh. Oh, like, yeah. Oh my God. Anyway. And now kids just get a MacBook. And- <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. Yeah, I think it was like the same thing. A girl was like, "Oh, you're not on Facebook. You're on Facebook." And I was like, "Okay." And then got on the laptop there in class and made I a was Facebook. Such... Isn't that the arc of the whole picture? Yeah. yeah, that's the arc of the whole picture. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Dude wants the oh. girl. And what a what <laughs> a true. True. again that that whole concept of social media being like it's not an everybody thing. It's a cool thing. Like again, <laughs> yeah. like I think everybody who I appreciate you too. <laughs> Uh, everybody uh, really does get onto social media, yeah. every platform, because everybody else is on it, and you just want to be cool. You, you want to be like, in in the in the heartbeat of life, right? You want to be in other. Well, people's at the beginning, kinda... you want the girl, and sure, then, and then you're just like, All right, this is cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, yeah. You good? I'm trying to get it. I, am I good? Yes. I'm all trying here to give you guys like silent signals. Just I'm, I'm sorry. It's, uh, like, well, when you're telling all three of us at the same time, it's kind well, of I was like, looking okay. at you. One of us. I thought so you were looking at me. Tell me because mm-hmm. one thing I really loved about this film was, yeah. was the pacing and obviously the sharp writing. Do you think that's why it was fast paced? Because yeah, definitely, saying, man. They have to but it's, everything together. it's a weird thing, man. Um, no, but it's very same... different from Gone Girl, which also right. David did, which is just spaced out. Yeah. No, uh, I, I think it. I think it's both. In this scenario, I think it's both. It's definitely the sharp writing. But at the same time, it, there's always like, bah, bah, bah. it's tip for tat, man. It's 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 getting the dialogue on this really fast paced kind also, of. Also, uh, Aaron Sorkin has gone on record to say that, which blew my mind the first time I ever heard this statement. He sees he hears dialogue as music. Mm, I like it. He hears the ups, the downs, the lifts, the throws. He hears that, and and when he said that, it blew my fucking mind. And it informed my writing on like, 
oh, the, he had the inflection has to be here. I mean, in my directing too, right? But writing like, oh, this has to sound like this, this has to sound like this, this has to sound like this. Uh -huh. it, it's dialogue. It, it really is like musical in a sense. And uh, and and Sorkin is notorious for saying that kind of stuff, man. Like that's how he views dialogue. So I think part of it is it's writing, but also Fincher knows how to make a precise film, right? He yeah. knows how to make a good paced, a well paced. But even the his newest film, which yeah, it was fine, but it, it killer? the killer, it was fine. It was fine. I think, but it the pace cleaner. They just put killer. You know, the drop the the. Just, just drop the. Um, yeah. Uh, it's it's both, dude. It has to be both in this scenario. And to kind of no, the last thing Sorkin or Fincher, Fincher. Oh, yeah. Fincher did the killer. I think he has a deal with Netflix right now where he's doing a couple of just these fun little films. Yeah, that's what Netflix is he doing. He doesn't have doing. anything in development right now either. Sorkin, no, oh, Fincher. Fincher. Fincher, wow. The Sorkin. Sorkin right now. I think the last thing he directed was a trial of Chicago. Being the Ricardos. Oh, that's right. That was fucking great. Being the Ricardos was a beautiful picture. With, uh, I wanted to see it with Nic it's Nicole so good. Kidman Nicole Kidman and, uh, and Javier Bardem. Bardem. Uh, right now, he's got a TV movie that he wrote that's in production. A few good men. Huh. No, that's based on his script, this courtroom drama with Tom Cruise. Or, uh, Broadway. Oh, so yeah. that's what it is. Uh, okay. But it's a TV movie. Huh. Huh. Well, huh. One, one thing. It, it's weird, though, man. IMDb is defining TV movies as being streaming movies. Oh. Uh. But it was originally a Broadway play in 89 that Sorkin wrote. Yeah. yeah. And then they made it into a film with... Uh, it wasn't the Tom Cruise. You can't handle the truth. Yeah, yeah. I want the You can't handle Yeah, right? No truth. pass is listed on IMDb. Um, the directors are Scott Ellis and Alex Rodzinski. Hmm. Yeah, it's, it's based on the play, right? And he also did uh, The West Wing, yeah. which is huge. He did Newsroom, which is huge. West like, Wing, yeah, yeah you, you could tell. Sorkin came from TV, man, and and <sighs> the dude, the dude's Holy amazing. shit, I didn't know Sorkin wrote the money money ball. Yeah. Oh, wow. I cried with that one dude at the end. When Sorkin he, has some really good. When he finally credits. has like he Steve turned down Jobs. the contract and he puts the girls. He did Steve Jobs. Has, an, the, has a similar cutting thing. Is it the cutcher one or the other one? No, no, the good one. Because <laughs> there's three of them. The no, the fast bender one. Oh, Which okay. did. No, not Fincher. The guy from Slumdog Millionaire directed that one. Justin Long did one too. Danny Boyle. Cool. Danny Boyle. Danny Boyle directed the the good one. Um, I like the Aston Kutcher one. It's fun. Yeah, that's what it is. It's Nobody's fun. seen the Justin Long one. No, no, that one's good. Which is ironic because didn't he do the Mac commercials back in the day. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah that's cool. Really? Yeah, he did like the I'm Mac. I'm it's PC. all white in the back. It's the, yeah. What? That really? was Justin yeah, Long. Yeah. Yeah. Um, then I have a question on the cinematography. Film. Yeah. What's the Why the uh, tilt lens at the rowboat competition? No, it was Mac. Oh, um, oh. I feel like so with By that the way, lens. I love that effect. Like, yeah, uh, the if, tilt shift. Yeah, yeah, it's a really, it's a really oh, fun effect. As, but the only kind of caveats to get that effect, you have to be very high up if you want to get the miniature effect because you're trying to get. Um, just a little perspective of like everything being microscopic, but you got, you have to have a really good like perspective. Usually the focal lengths on those, I think they're kind of telephoto. Um, you can add boosters to them, but, but, but why, why would you want them? Cause I thought, why would looked, you want it to be small? I thought it looked fake for that scene specifically. Well, that's the it's, point of that. It's, 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 that's what it's meant to do. It's meant Society to Society are just a bunch of toys. Get look the fuck fake. out of here for real. For real? It, it, it's the miniature effect. So it looks like a diorama. It looks like a bunch of little, you know, people playing a game. And, you know, it doesn't... When you see a film, right, shot on a normal 50 millimeter lens, the reason you use lenses like that is to push your audience that you're seeing this, how, room, how it actually room. happens. Yeah, yeah. But how the eye these, perceives the thing. Yeah, when 50. you see these wider perspectives that kind of just give you this landscape and then shrink it down to just, you're only getting this little sliver. This 8-bit version of society. Uh -huh. Yeah, it makes it feel like it's really not that important. It's synthetic. Yeah. It, synthetic is one way, but I also feel like it, it's, uh, not important. It, it's trying to bring down the value because if you look at all these people, even when they like went and had their big game and everything, mm -hmm. look at the way everybody was talking to them. Like, Oh man, well it was really close. That was kind of fun. And everybody's playing face. Nobody yeah. really cares. Like, I mean, even these kids were <laughs> kind of like a <laughs> bunch of rich kids complaining about like, Hey dad, somebody took our idea and everybody knows that that's who they are. Yeah. Nobody really wants to give them anything. It fucking blew my mind. That's yeah. insane. That's, that's yeah. pretty cool. It, it's such a, um, 
reductive. I mean, yeah. it's a reductive. It's a reductive device, but at the same time, I think like the synthetic factor plays into like it, it's fake, right? Oh. The, the 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 way you're perceiving this, it's it's it's. I didn't know how to take it. I was just yeah. like, hmm. it's and fake. Then these guys were saying that it's it's created. It's fabricated society. Yeah, their high level, you know, perception or or perspective of life, it's fake. Even not like even a, they live in the real world. God damn, dude, that's my, even my the whole thing of like, um, I think they they're talking to that guy who he probably like uh, runs the institution of the university, but yeah. they have to be like, oh, your highness, or like something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. No, like, no, no, no. Uh, they're they're in another country. They're in the UK. Yeah, and um, in the Netherlands or in the Netherlands, and he's the prince of that. Yeah. Country or something, right? He's no, he's a he's a he's a royal. He's yeah, he was like the, the prince or something. Yeah, the, the 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 guy with glasses. The one who said that his daughter was said that her and her friends are already talking. About no, 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 no. The guy that walks away from there are two de- different oh, guys. Yeah, yeah, one yeah. of them does run the university. The other one is the 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 uh, you know, the other actual other prince. Oh, you're talking about the university one, right? There's two dudes. One of them walks away. He's like, "Excuse me, gentlemen," and then I just remember it was the one that they had to keep referring to him as like your highness. That's the one. That that's yeah. the one that walks away from the conversation. Well, I mean, just in that whole thing, like the the whole playing titles and them trying to, oh my God, like them trying to climb the, the ladder and talk to the highest authorities they can, thinking uh-huh. we're going to be able to like get on top of Zuckerberg but because in some it's... way and then to have somebody come up, oh yeah, my daughter just saw it on Facebook. Like, but, are you guys but on But you there? know what's awesome about that too and, like, is he's ahead of they, all of They have their own societal ladder to climb. Mm-hmm. And in their societal ladder, if it's not a tradition, who cares? If it's not, oh, do you, you, when races like this, usually you win by a boat length. My, this was so close. What a close race. Yeah, yeah. And that's all they give a shit about. Where if you come to them with your little problem about the computer and what, you know, like, it's not tradition, kid. Who cares? Like, go play with your toy. This is no, no, you're in high society right now. Like, that's even why, like, yeah. the brother was so reluctant, right? Like, yeah. he's like, no, we can't do that because we are men we're, of Harvard. We're men of Harvard, and yeah. it's like, oh, okay, in that's your own little like matters. world, like you know. That okay, that makes more sense. And, I was like, and the brother is doing something really smart. He's protecting their image because it's going to set them up for life, right? When the other one's like, no, we can create something new. Like, we can create something that we we can call our own and be proud of, and not live off daddy's money. You know, like yeah, they even both of them have a like a societal split one guy wants to go with the new the other guy wants to stick with the old and it's it's a really interesting kind of they have their own again societal ladder just like zuckerberg he has a societal ladder that he also wants to climb um it's really 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 insane storytelling did you catch all this on your first watch oh my god i i mean it's i caught a bunch of little things and and it's very much i gotta digest it i mean that's why you know i'm I'm not saying 9.5 when I gave my rating as like, yeah, this has so many elements that it could have improved on and all that. Mm -hmm. It's just more like that's just to give me the wiggle room to like really think about it. But I have a question for you regarding that. Yeah. Do you guys think I have a I have I have something. Yeah. yeah. But before I give mine, do you what could this what could this film have done better? Mm. For instance, when we talked about Dallas Buyers Club, we talked about the, the casting faux pas. Right. In this scenario, what could have been done better? If anything. I have uh, one little gripe with this film, and it's not it it doesn't it doesn't matter, but if I were directing, I I would have done this one thing differently. Let's see, man. I mean the script was good. Performances were they were they spot on? Hop to bottom. So something you didn't believe, something you didn't like. No, I'm trying to think. I mean, probably direction, not linear. You didn't like. By that. the way, Shia know. LaBeouf was originally wanted. I did see that. No, no, I agree wholeheartedly. No, you needed this Eisenberg. Eisen's, you know. Eisenberg. Yeah, I keep saying his quirkiness is. Uh, Eisenberg's. A- By the way, uh, uh, Jesse Eisenberg actually has OCD, and it was such a challenge for him in this role because he's like, I constantly fight not to be this guy every day of my life. And now you're forcing me to be this guy in like my my uncomfortability uh-huh. of like being this societal asshole, you know? This little um, awkward kid. <clears throat> also, um, somebody was up for the Sean Parker role. Um, that wasn't Justin Timberlake. Justin Timberlake nailed it because he he's usually it. not that good. Maybe Alpha Dog was pretty good. Yeah, Alpha Dog was really other good. Other ones that I've seen him, he's kind of like eh. Yeah, yeah. Um, but somebody else was that up for that role. I forget who it was. It was somebody big. Uh it was like another like Justin me- Timberlake part. But anyways, um, all spot on. 
Let me hear what you guys say. Well, well did you anything that you would have changed? Mm, no, mm-hmm. I, I'm I'm really struggling to find something genuinely wrong or something yeah. I would have changed just because um for the realistic elements, for the metaphorical elements, for uh the time spent with each character, the balance and in this whole thing. I mean, you know, yeah. even even the element of like balancing out the story where we're focusing on these characters who like seem like heroes to Zuckerberg's character. Mm -hmm. And this is like, Oh, like I can barely get into the bike room of this place. Like Mm -hmm. what an honor Mm -hmm. to then he's looking down on all these people. Like, you know, this, like they just wash away and, and balancing out that, like, I just, everything's great. I I Uh, feel like I get to go. Jonathan Groff was one that auditioned. Jonathan Groff. Jonathan, you know who Jonathan Groff is? Who? You guys, you guys won't care. He played the king in Hamilton. Okay. Uh, so he's a he's a Broadway actor, musical guy, but he's uh he would have done pretty good too, man. He's a really good actor, customer. He's really good. I gotta see that. He's like oh, he was on Glee and he was on a lot of these shows, but he's really good, man. Uh, not as gritty, I guess, as as a, hard to, hard to think that Justin Timberlake's gritty, right? But he kind of is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, comparatively, I think he dropped like twenty pounds by the way, like seventeen pounds or something to play that role for this because he said that he wanted to look younger. He thought it would make he him did. look younger. I mean, it's 2010, but yeah, yeah. he did look kind of young. Um, so who was the actor? Shia LaBeouf. No, like how he's... They're talking about all the people who are going to Harvard. At <laughs> oh, Natalie Portman. Natalie Portman went to Harvard from, I think, 2009 to 2012 or something like that. Or it was right before they shot the film. And uh, she was... No, no, no. It was like 2000 to 2004. It was like right there. And um, After she made Star Wars? I guess so. She was going to Harvard, wow. Natalie Portman, to the point where not only was she a student, um, but when they were researching the film, Aaron Sorkin got invited by her like, hey, come and meet some of my Harvard friends. We can tell you what it was like in the time that, you, that your script is based yeah, on yeah, yeah. and sat down and like had a dinner with all of her friends. It's like, what was Harvard like? Harvard Details. didn't play ball, by the way. They didn't shoot a single frame of this film in Harvard. But did they let them use the name at least? Or yeah, I guess. I mean, you could probably get away with that, right? But yeah, yeah, yeah. they they didn't want to play ball. They don't want you to shoot. You know why it wasn't even like it? it wasn't even was like don't use our name or the, we don't agree with the storyline. They another film shot there in 1970 called Love Story, very very big uh, film for, for Paramount at the time. Great picture, um, and they destroyed a lot of shit oh. <laughs> while they were there. And since then, Harvard has never let people fucking shoot there. Um, so it's like this guy broke the knob and shit. Yeah, yeah. So like oh, yeah. they didn't let him. But too historical. So what were you gonna say? What What do you think is my my uh, the question no, I, I he, the question I posed was um, if it's not a perfect ten, what would make it? Yeah, like if if uh, if you could fix anything, I have one minor gripe with this film. Are you going like with the whole women depiction? Nah. Okay, cool. <laughs> Brenda Song. Oh. Brenda Song was great in this. Exactly, she was mm. cool. And, um. Well, uh, that's not her. Uh, who's the other one that's always in the executive office? Rashida Jones. She was good. Such a yeah. small but pivotal Strong fucking role. role. Strong role. So good, yeah. If you could fix anything. I'm trying to think, too. I would have liked to have seen at least uh, the settlement of the Winkle Wasp trial. Just give us that shot of this guy standing over Zuckerberg's shoulder. Oh, like because then you're giving him the satisfaction. You're telling his story a little more than you're telling Zuckerberg's. What does Zuckerberg get out of that? I think I mean, it's I think it's really good to just leave it that after we kind of feel like we're we're caught up to the story that yeah, the losses are going to yeah. happen from all different directions, yeah. then it's that whole moment where okay, then you're by yourself. What I like about that is you're taking away the power from them. They're so non-existent to the story as a whole. Like she said, like Rashida Jones' character was like, it's a speeding ticket. You're just a speeding ticket, bro. Like you were a catalyst to help us tell the story, but it's his story ultimately. You yeah. don't get you don't get the big that big I got the paycheck. You know, like No, and the, the sad thing was uh for like their characters, yeah. Um the big punch was when Eisenberg says, like you know, if like you could have like if you were the real makers of Facebook, like then you should have been the ones making it. But you yeah. didn't make it. Like if you would have created fake or what did he say? Yeah. yeah. Uh, if you would have invented Facebook. What is it? What's the line? If it's a you really good line. Had the ability to make Facebook, you would you have, would have invented it. Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. And that, by and the way, this film, I could like quote every fucking line 
while watching it. Like I, I will never tire of this film. I can quote every every line is so good, man. Like quote the one where he wakes up with uh, the fifty shades of gray. With, the, with the, oh another actress that like yeah was her first performance I think like her first film role ever two thousand ten um Who Dakota thought? Johnson or like first speaking role because her dad's a famous actor so like yeah she probably came out on like Miami Vice or whatever Don Johnson was doing at the time but um so what was your big you want me to quote the line well fine oh okay, um, okay my baby oh uh you say what did she say she said you don't know my name I should just kick your ass. And he, he goes on a monologue uh, about the parrots, right? Uh, uh, about the parrots? Yeah, yeah. She says, like, he get, he gives the whole bio of her that she told him last night. Oh, yeah, yeah, you yeah. You know, like, your parents are this. You're, uh, but he didn't remember the major. She starts speaking French. He's like, ah, Where French. From? Where? Bad uh, Times at the El Royale? No, uh, How to Be Single. Oh, yeah. The shitty rom com. I like her. I think she's a really good actress. She's pretty good. She gets a bad rap because of Fifty Shades of Grey. This was her first, like... Speaking role. Speaking role as an adult because the only other credit she has is back in 99. When she's a kid, yeah, for her dad, I'm sure. Crazy in Alabama. Anyways. Big gripe. Big gripe. And it's not... Again, doesn't it's something saves it for me. I could have done without the middle moment of him seeing Erica at the mm-hmm. dinner. Yeah. I kind of want to forget about her until I'm reminded through the Facebook request. No, you know what I think? No, I would no, really I like think, to be... I'd I really like to forget about it. Well, I think it works because, like, they just got, you know, in the restroom with these girls. Uh-huh. And he sees her and is officially, like, still thinking he about He cares her. more about that than he cares about the girls. Because yeah. I, I think if you leave it there or if you leave it well, at this that point... that not clarity, no? <laughs> no, no, like... When he already gets like, oh man, we already have like 10,000 people on our website uh-huh. at this very low level. In a way, they what, both feel like him? they both feel like they've made it, right, you know? Right. Like, ah, oh, dude, we're on like 10 of the <laughs> we biggest. We have groupies. Per- yeah, we're on like 10 of the biggest prestigious like universities in the country. Like, we are we are badasses and all this kind of stuff, you know? Yeah. And at that point, like, they, they start getting recognized. Yeah. People are like, oh, dude, great job on Facebook. So this is that, just a way of humbling him? That that's It's so important. It's so important to have a knock where then afterwards, mm. it, it almost like, instead of it just being like, okay, we're going to keep continuing the project yeah. and see where it goes. No. Okay, guys, we need yeah. to expand. I, I, we need I, to get yeah. out of here. Oh, that's good. That's I a agree, catalyst yeah. to, like, a catalyst to him. It's that, that frantic kind of, yeah, you know. The only thing that saves it for me... Um, which is just taking it a step further. The music. Dun, oh. dun, dun. That piece of music is only played three times in the film. Mm-hmm. The first time it's played is when she breaks up with him. The second time it's played is we need to expand. The third time it's played is towards the end when he's on the phone with Sean. Mm-hmm. That motif represents Zuckerberg's loneliness. <laughs> Bless, Bless you. you. Bless you. Bless, Bless you. you. That motif represents Zuckerberg's loneliness. Dun, dun, dun. That that one, genius. That's what saves it for me. Is like the the next moment of loneliness. It's gonna drive him forward, right? So the music is like okay, all right, cool. But I also I also could have done without. But it is great. I mean, don't get me wrong. It it serves it serves the story extremely it well. It Serves a very um, strong uh, beat. But I, yeah, I guess I just wanted to forget about her until I realized. Oh, you I know? think. I think you would have felt like, oh, it would have been the ending would have been punchier. Yeah, yeah. that's what I was thinking I think too. I think you're seeing the potential for it being yeah. punchier without that, that la, la, scene. But then if you get rid of that moment, again, yeah. you're getting yeah, rid yeah, of that, 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 that the catalyst catapult, to, you know? to, to, to yeah, yeah. Um but fair. Yeah, man. completely fair. But now, again, a big you know big talking point I uh I want to get your take on Austin. Um it won for editing. Why did it win for editing? What what is it about this film and then the way that it was edited that you can see that um it it deserved that for people who maybe don't see what editing really does to a film. See nowadays the young Thundercats. Thundercats? I got to see them in concert. They have a short span. They did I tell you about an Uber passenger I had recently? I picked up from Lowbrow, right? Yeah. And I was like you know, you try to make conversation with these people, and uh, it's like, who was there tonight? He's like, local bands. Yeah, you told me about and it. And then I was like, oh, cool. And I was like, you know, I had a buddy who just saw Thundercats recently at Lowbrow, and he was like, okay. <laughs> I was like, all right. All right. Yeah. Thanks, buddy. 
Yeah, I was like, all right. So just because you brought up when, uh, you ran to Carlos and you're like, I got our next film idea. <laughs> it's about betrayal. About betrayal. Right. I kind of touched on it a bit at the beginning. It's um, one thing people, the common misconception, and I was at fault with this back when Dunkirk won over Baby Driver, is when people think editing, they want the flash. Like, not the comic book character, but like, they want the quick cuts. They want the match cuts. They want the fancy schmancy stuff that you see, right? Like we talk about it all the time with like social media, right? Yeah. Like um, people do these like commercials for local restaurants, and you're like, what the like, what, what the fuck was that? Oh was, yeah, where where they? It's all uh, glitz and glamour, yeah. but it doesn't mm-hmm. tell anybody anything. Yeah. No. So that's what the common misconception with editing is. But with this one, the um, pacing of the film, the ability to pace it with the three four different storylines going on and you not getting lost i think is the reason that it won mm. the ability to tell all that because without this, losing any anybody. emotion without losing any emotion this without very missing easily could have been chronological right oh yeah big time yeah and i think it would have hurt the film if it was yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I, I feel i didn't realize how how um how much this was informing my directing until until I rewatched it. Because I do remember talking to Austin and talking to the Lao when we shot my last film that was like, hey, this is this is the a first key ten minutes reference. Yeah. The first ten minutes of this film is is a master class on how to shoot two people in one room talking about something important. Uh, more and more informatively, like for, for my film, what I needed was two people fighting about something, the tip for tat thing and and uh, the battle of wits, and um, and and this thing is not like it shows you. It's a master class of editing because of the shot selection and where you put them. But I didn't realize. I didn't even tell you. Like I I, I told you for coverage sake. Like oh, this isn't. It's not using coverage. It's using something way more special than that for a two. What should have been an over the shoulder conversation in most of this conversation, right? Mm-hmm. Where we stay on a wide and, and see both of their perspectives, and then we cut back and 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 I, I showed it to them to like, hey, we need like this is what I want. This is the feel I want when we're going back and forth. But I didn't realize that when when she says when she meant when uh, the the final club is mentioned for the first time in the conversation, instead of going back to their 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 kind of OTSs. Well, they're not OTSs. They're just angled shots. They're not straight on. Now we're straight on for this important question. Oh, yeah. That, now that, we're dead we, on. And we have that in uh, the and last we film. we have that. Because of that moment. Yeah. Well, I don't I don't remember explicitly like... I do. That I pointed that out that we needed yes. that? I don't yes. remember it's, that. It's in the storyboards right over there. Uh, because I remember that there you were saying... Look at how they're doing the coverage, but the coverage has the intentionality. And that's what's really beautiful about the cinematography, the intentionality of the power dynamic. Yeah. I mean, they obviously got the coverage from straight on. Mm-hmm. They got the, for both of them, they got the coverage yeah. from a little After bit of an the angle, fact, though. the OTS, and then they got the wide shot that's like very neutral for uh-huh. both of them. Profile. And and it's knowing with all those, what is it going to do when inserted into the dialogue? Like that moment when she's like, no, it's over. And you're seeing her straight on. Well, then forget uh, thinking about like, oh, this is an even ground between both of mm-hmm. them. You know, visually that that, that power striking, is, yeah. uh, you know, like cut that. No, the, the tables she, have shifted. Yeah. You are no longer in power. I am no longer interested in what you're having to say. Yeah. This relationship's over. That's it. And and that's very much why we had it in the, mm-hmm. the script or mm-hmm. the, the, storyboards the storyboards because um, in the film the relationship is just like, this could just be a little Even, passing yeah. uh, fight until it isn't until yeah. there's like, I know you're lying. Yeah. And then that's when we did that straight that's one word. Straight up dead yeah. on shot with her. Yeah. No, but I remember that being a big influence. Yeah. So yeah, no, maybe I just, cause I didn't think about, I haven't thought about it since, right. I haven't thought about it yeah. in four months or whatever, but um, yeah, man, this, this film, when it comes to intentionality, which is everything. Yeah. Um, I'm just still yeah. sitting with it. Uh, there's so much, there uh one thing i was gonna say towards like the cutting what i really like is that it shows you how fast this wildfire was spreading (laughs) and i mean when we all think about like when we think about media and how fast we went from being like i mean you know and this whole like all of us saying like oh yeah one day i just kind of jumped on facebook but then it became (laughs) like oh man then everybody did and oh man you you needed to be on it and posting and yeah. and reacting and then refreshing. Uh, I remember <laughs> like when I started college, like I was our, I was behind for sure. Like, uh, but I remember being like, "What do you mean you don't have 
Snapchat and Instagram and all this kind of stuff and then getting on that and then now that's like fueled everything else. Are oh, you going to have any of that on your flip phone? No. <laughs> I couldn't get it on my flip phone. <laughs> I had a flip phone. He did actually have a flip phone. Yeah, I don't think we, we ever told that story. We met him. <laughs> no, I... Uh, Small side note. No, when I uh like was beating these guys, cause it was like, oh, I've you want do you want to meet? Yeah, you want to meet Tower? Then it was just like, uh, they said, oh, so the way we uh you know communicate is we use Facebook Messenger, and uh, I was like, I think that's gonna be a problem, guys. And they're like, what do you mean? I'm like, I can't get Check Facebook. Yeah, and then it was like, I can't get it. And then I think Eric like pulled it like. Is that a prop? Like, what the hell is that? Is that like, one what? of those? Yeah. Is that a flip phone? Is, yeah. And then I showed him, and they're like, holy shit. No, it's just a real flip phone. Yeah. But, yeah. And it wasn't like, by the way, like you couldn't afford it. You just wanted to stay away from the fastness of oh, yeah, a because, smartphone, I guess. Yeah, it was too spicy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, but, uh, you know, the film did this wonderful um, job of portraying the speed at which information flows. You know, the the, the oh. especially that first moment when we see like oh he's typing up something and then you know the party's going on in the background he continues typing oh working on this part of the code and then it expands quickly and it's like oh we got our first user oh we got our first hundred users our first two thousand users you know and it's, it's just like kept- writing code right it's yeah. like the Get pace the of writing code metaphor, bro you no, blowing my mind right now bro the film is the film's nothing but that <laughs> and i mean writing code how many of you were lost when they were talking in all that language i wasn't too lost because i went to a nerd school where you know like I went to a hackathon, man. And I, I yeah. like, I, what? I'm jealous. You're that jealous? That's pretty cool. Dude, hackathons are the weirdest thing because um, I know that the culture shifted, especially like in, in the contemporary age, where if you do programming of any type, you're not a nerd. You really are kind of like a digital rock star. Like, I'm inventing what you're going to be playing with for the next 15 years. That's how everybody acts. And I yeah. met people at this uh, convention thing where it was kind of like, oh, yeah, since I was 13, I was already, like, typing yeah. out all these lines. Like, what have you done? And I was like, I'm just, I fucking take pictures, man. Like, <laughs> well, I don't let, know what you want. Also, let's not sit here and pretend like MySpace didn't teach us how to write code. Yeah, right? We wanted those <laughs> BS fonts, you know? No, but the language, too. Like, I had to learn how to type, co- how to write code for, um, like, website management and, like, uh, certain aspects of that. Like, I, had, I had to learn for my job. But So I wasn't totally lost, but, yeah. Yeah, but I mean. You also don't need to know. Yeah, you Not don't. You just need uh, that bit of dialogue to show you these guys are knowledgeable mm-hmm. and, and to show mm-hmm. you that these guys are wicked smart. Yeah. You know, as long as you know that, yeah, then everything else is going to make sense when it comes to their success, when it comes to what the website is, yeah. their foundation, and seeing the way that they work. You just it, yeah. It's just meant to be a story beat of being like, seeing how his mind works, right? Those voiceovers yeah. are so important to like, this is the mind yeah. of somebody who's just yeah. like, oh, oh yeah, but I'm going to have to get past yeah, this. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah I'm going to have to get past this. Oh, wait, uh, I just went into here. There's a passcode system that was a little harder to get through, but I think if I change up the code this way, then we'll be able to get like How ballsy, way. man. How ballsy to not be tempted to keep that format of storytelling for the whole film. I yeah. think it's also trusting your audience, right? It's, it's trusting that they're going to be smart enough that during that moment, pick Audiences up those. Are dumb, but yeah. No, but like, you know, you, that's that's the thing. We've all watched films that we think are bad, but when you look at what makes them bad, part of it is the fact that they'll hold your hand. Yeah. And then, you, you know, the character will be like, oh my God, I didn't realize that I should have been a better friend. And then runs over to the other person. Hey, man, I just realized I should have been a better friend. I'm sorry. And then it's like, oh, I hey, forgive you. Is that a you. shot at M. Night? I feel like it was Shamu? a personal shot. What are you talking at about? Split, bro. Oh, That's no. the twist. No, like there, I've I've seen other films. I mean, the one that I get mad at the most, like I I feel Sharknado. No, um, it's funny. It's kind of dumb. Like you know, it's like a golden retriever. You know, you you laugh at the moments when they do something stupid, but you're not gonna like beat it. Um, <laughs> anyway, no. Yeah, I'm never I'm letting you in my house again. What are you talking I'm about? Never letting you around Cooper again. <laughs> uh, no, but I uh, like my personal least favorite film of all time. The one I get the most upset at. Last it, Christmas. Is uh, Miss Marvel or uh, Captain Marvel? Oh, when oh dude, I- we just lost all our female audience right now. No, because that one's not even a good female story. That one's just a dude. It's oh, a desert uh, out there. Dude. Like just- uh, I'm a white woman, and I wish white I was strong. Woman. <laughs> like I wish I was strong, and then it's like, hey, don't you remember you used to be strong? Oh my God, I remember I used to be strong. 
I guess now I'm strong again. And then she just goes and kicks ass and then just wins everything. And it's so don't dumb. Don't you get in the whole like plane accident or whatever? No, but that whole thing was just to say like, oh, don't you remember that? Strong. Yeah, it was like, don't you remember? So they they ripped off Hancock. Ooh, basically. God. I was about to mention it. Hancock's <laughs> the best one. Ripped off a I Hancock. hate it. I hate it so much. But that one does a lot to like hold your hand. And it's like, don't you remember who you are? And then a flashback and her remembering. And then it comes back. Oh my God, I think I do. And then they hug it out and you're like, this is so stupid. But like this film, in contrast, (laughs) (laughs) in contrast to Captain Marvel, um, this one, it gives you those little beats, right? The voiceover beats, or it'll give you the, the, like the um, tilt shift lens that the the boat rowing thing where, you know, you don't have to know every reason why that's happening, but subconsciously you can already feel like, these guys are just puny. These little tiny, like, toys. I also like, love that, that he decided to do that in the end where he says uh, the Winklevosses uh, rode for the Olympic, the U.S. Olympic team in Beijing. They sixth placed place. sixth. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the only thing that I found kind of weird was that scene, actually, after the tilt or whatever. Yeah, the tilt lens. They changed the, the, the music, the score, everything. Oh, when they're well, in that the, little, like... Um, yeah, the, I, uh, I forget the song. I, it was a classical song, but uh-huh. if you noticed, it was remixed and it was digita- like digitized and like it would have these looping beats that were almost like a party and all that kind of stuff. And I mean, I think that's to kind of show the external conflict of if you try to stay traditional, you're going to get left behind. Mm. You know, if you try to stay with that whole like, no, yeah. we, we are Harvard men and this is how we handle things. Then look, they didn't even win the fucking race, and they were doing things by tradition, yeah. by standard. And then you know when they're like, "Screw it, no, we're gonna play the game that they're playing, and we're gonna we're gonna take it higher." Yeah. And that's when they made some headway. But it's that conflict between a classical song remix for a digital age. Is it gonna hold up, or is it gonna be left behind? You know, <laughs> that's really good. Yeah, because that that one stood out. Took you out of it. <clears throat> yeah. Social awesome, network. Hmm? The social network. Any oh, rating the dime. changes? The dime for you now? Dime. 9.5 to dime. 9.3 or 9.5? 9.3 or 9.5. Give it a dime if Talal gives me a kiss afterwards. Damn. Where? Tune in next week for the watch. <laughs> oh. Yeah, it's a dime. 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 Dime, dime, dime. Dime, 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 dime. Board, board, board. Dime, dime, dime. So everybody's... uh Respect! It's like you just said, I, it keeps going through my head. It's way better than I, than it should be. It's just, yeah. It's, it's, uh, and it is to the Lal's point. You, it's another one of those that you need to sit with and think about for a, for a while. Yeah. Uh, whether yeah. you want to or not, you I know, have to. I know think you guys were kind of like, okay, so what do you think? Is it, isn't no, it great? But, and but you haven't, we haven't had, I, I don't remember at least having a moment where you had to sit with it since Itu Mama Tambien. Yeah. Where you oh, were yeah, that was definitely one. Yeah. Like, I, I feel like you haven't had maybe all that jazz for a little bit, but... No, but even that one, I was like, wow, that one's big, but I already knew what I wanted to talk yeah. about. But, th- like, with Itu Mama Tambien like... and this one, I was like, I just need to sit back for a yeah. second. There's so much yeah. here that's that's great. And to the point where the Lao went to go wash the dishes... And was like, I just need to sit with this for a minute, man. Let me, let me, let me think Don't about to what me. I'm gonna say. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah no, because it was like, oh, you hated it, oh, this. and I was like, no, no, like I, I just, I genuinely Whoa. need a, 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 like a space to breathe because yeah. even like when you guys were making like jokes and all that kind of stuff, like during the film, oh, I could tell, dude, you were locked in. I yeah. was, I was like, oh, I, you're wired in. You're wired, I, I was wired, wired in. in yeah. yeah. I'm sorry that I forgot my Prada. My Prada's at the cleaners, cleaners. Yeah. and my fuck you flip flops. Oh, I love that line. Yeah. That scene, bro. You guys want to know what David Fincher's favorite line of the whole film is? Is it the math one? It is the math one. Which one? Oh, I'm sorry, I stole your thunder. No. Which one? Which one though? The one where he's where she's like he's like okay, so this is the eighteen thousand that you initially invested, and this mm-hmm. is the, the original and the original the original one thousand. Oh, let me check your math on that. Yep, got the same thing. <laughs> yeah, I love that. It's great. Yeah, well, yeah. Social network. So next week, social network's terrific picture. Next week, uh, we actually have. A little different release schedule next week. Yep. Uh, we're you... releasing two episodes. What? More oh. than one. Uh, more than one episode of more than one podcast. Man, are we going to talk about two films? No, no, it's actually a three. You guys are fucking bad at this. Um, <laughs> next week. Today's Monday. As, as the Wait, t- time where we release still this. still Monday? See, that's what we're bad at right there. <laughs> what what are, today's together. Monday. What are, the, what are the MacGuffin questions that I need to be asking? I'm not going to tell you. Um, so today's Monday. To, to, at the time of the release of this episode. We're releasing this? 
<laughs> it's I'm Monday. Sorry. Okay. Um, next Monday, we will be releasing our conversation with Doug Jones. Uh, Doug Jones, you will know him for his performances in The Shape of Water and Hellboy, Pan's Labyrinth, um, Star, Star Trek. Trek Discovery. Yeah. Uh, I mean, like bench warmers, bench warmers. Uh, what we do in the shadows, to Jim Carrey, oh, uh, Living Color. Yeah, and Living Color. I mean, everything. This, this, he's amazing. Legendary actor. He's amazing. He's amazing. amazing. An amazing conversation. He, he, he stuck around and humored us for like two yeah. hours. Uh, awesome, awesome oh. chat with him. And uh, you'll see some promos leading up to it. So stay tuned for that. We're going to release just some cool little uh, cutaways from the episode. And, and we got to talk about my favorite film of his, which is also my favorite film of Guillermo del Toro. He was a very close collaborator to him, a hero to us, um, The Shape of Water. So we all decided we got Doug Jones. We got some insight on The Shape of Water. Let's make let's have a whole conversation about this because it did win Best Picture. Absolutely, at the Oscars. It'll be our last uh, previous Oscar. It'll be our last previous Oscar winners before we tackle the actual 2024 Oscar race, race. uh, where we release our traditional four-hour episode or whatever (laughs) three-hour episode to talk about all of the Best Picture contenders this year. That we are going to have an Oscars watch. Oscars live watch along. One of our favorite traditions here at the yeah. Watchtower Film Podcast. It was a lot of fun last year. Yeah, it, it was. was. It a was a lot of fun, but we're going to stay during the commercials and talk because that's that's when we have we time. need to do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, we, we just it was our first time testing it out. But yeah. I know that we're like, oh, it's commercials. Let's go get up. And it's like, no, that's when people should be watching. I also like, had someone tell me or a few people actually tell me recently that. They asked, are you guys in the Oscars? And yeah, I had a few people say like, hey, dude, like I was like live with you guys and I was commenting and you guys never looked at my comments and stuff like that. So we need to put like a screen here or something where we can oh, see yeah, yeah, the comments. Oh, we yeah. can do the, the. Yeah. So they were like, they were like, I was trying to interact and nobody responded to my questions. And so I was like, shit, dude, I'm sorry. Like we, we will. Like, that was we'll. actually me. but <laughs> <laughs> So we'll make a, We'll make a point yeah, of it for sure. Is but our, this is our round two at yeah. Uh, yeah. Oscars watch party. But. We have a lot of fun doing it, yeah. and and it's going to be a lot of fun doing the recap video because if you saw last year's, um, we'll be talking about all the Best Picture Award nominees, Ooh. giving you breakdowns, our own personal no. takes. Yeah. Um, and having to do it in like 20 minutes a piece. By yeah, the way. so, so, so like kind of for a challenge all too. the people that are out there that don't, you know, they feel like, oh man, I haven't caught up on the Oscars, it'll be a nice little package yeah. to be like, this is every film. And you know, if if one of them excites you, definitely go and see it. And sure. um, if you don't, if you just need a kind of a rundown yeah. on like what what am I gonna expect before the Oscars? Before it's like, yeah. oh, I don't know what any of these films are and about. If you don't want to watch the full three hour thing, we'll have the individuals. Oh yeah, the individuals. So yeah, if you if you don't want to have to yeah. sit down for the entire episode, you can check out the individuals. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I thought we did a really nice recap. Yeah, absolutely. Like, I, I love that episode. And like I said, uh, also like let us know if you um if you like this kind of bridge you know where we we pick our kind of favorite best oscar contenders for each category of our liking and then bridge you know bridge it into the actual oscars so you know we try to pump it pump it up as much as we can we value yeah, the yeah. oscars and we know how important they are we know how important they are to us and to cinema as a whole so um let us know if you like that and um stay tuned for all these great yeah. episodes quick. doug jones shape of water oscars oscars quick question real quick yeah did Mark Zuckerberg have a cameo? No. There's no way, huh? Because he, he didn't like want to do anything. He didn't anything. want it. I, saw, I thought I saw something on the... No. Just rumors. He, uh, however, the only time he even really acknowledged the film publicly on a on a lighter note is he went on SNL when Jesse Eisenberg was hosting. Oh. Oh. And he was, like, in the audience. And, like... But it was part of the bit. Yeah, but he was still... He was... He, he addressed it. He kind of said, like, well, that was interesting, I guess. Like, it was part of the bit. So, yeah, you could see that on SNL. I like it. Um, but, yeah, let us know what you guys think of this episode. Yes. Let us know what you think about uh, your thoughts on the social network. Is it the masterpiece we all regard it to be? Um, and let us know what other films you guys want us to cover. We're coming up on a couple of free pick months. So, like, uh, though I think Austin and I already picked all of our picks, doesn't mean they can't change. So, well, let us know what you guys want us to cover. We still got a lot pro. of open slots, Castro. Yeah. I'm thinking comedy, dude. I'm, I'm, I'm going all comedy. <laughs> yeah, but we'll keep announcing all the all the uh, months as they come, what we're covering that month, stuff like that. So, thank, thank you, you guys. In. Yeah, thank you guys for tuning in to the Watch Star Film Podcast, and good night. Love good you night, guys. everybody. Facebook.
Facebook. Ooh, Facebook.